In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some precious metal stock picks. Um, these are in no way the best ones or the worst ones. I don't know. It's just ones that I've had experience with. Just my personal opinions. Please do your own research. These are the topics I'll be going over today. I purposely left out junior mining stocks because I don't feel most people are um, okay with the potential risk that comes with a junior mining stock because you can potentially lose everything especially if they're explorer and they can't find any um, anything and there's a lot of uh, junior mining stocks that are <laughs> either with bat management or their purpose like they claim they're actually going out to find um, deposits but they never do so that's kind of why I left those out Again, these are just my personal opinions, and I have been involved with most of the, or I've bought like most of the stock picks that I'll be talking about. So I, I don't hold all of them now, but you know, definitely have, have interactions with them. So first off, let's take a look at some introduction. So I guess my person, uh, personally, my background, I got into this sector in last year, 2019, around May time. I've been buying mostly um, the bigger, more senior companies throughout uh, from May of 2019 to, I think, May of 2020. And then I've just started slowly trimming my position, putting more into more junior companies and most, and also focus with the focus of silver as I see more upsides to silver. Also based on in previous bull, um, bull markets for the precious metals, silver tends to lag gold. However, it eventually um, outperforms and also the outlook for silver in terms of renewable energy like solar panels. Now, uh, in the next slide, I'll talk about uh, precious metals versus mining stocks. But let's take a look at the few categories that we'll be covering. So producers, you have your high cost, low cost, you know, bigger companies, smaller companies, and usually refer them by senior, intermediate, and junior. Juniors are mostly like in the explorers. I'll talk about that in a bit. For senior producers, they usually have um, lower cost, bigger, and they have bigger scale. And they're the the biggest, the best, and they will pro they usually have pretty consistent dividend yield and positive cash flow. That's definitely something that is hard to come by in this uh, this kind of econ economic times. When it comes to uh, intermediate, you might see higher costs, but one thing to keep in mind is if you have a high cost producer, it provides you with more leverage to the gold price. So you're definitely taking a bit more risk, but your potential return could be higher. Next up, we have uh, uh, explorers. The explorers, they're generally junior uh, mining companies and their the their whole purpose is pretty much to go out there and try to find um, interesting deposits and try to either sell that deposit to someone else or produce it themselves finally in this sector there's a very interesting category called royalty slash streaming so what they do they're pretty much finance uh, mining projects and they're they have low um, capital expenditure comparing to their revenue, very stable um, cash flow as they don't really go out and have to spend any um, capital expenditure. They're just really trying to find interesting projects and they lend money in return for either royalties or streaming. Stream is if you uh, like if it, it's like promise to uh, buy a certain fixed amount of metals for like a discount rate but because they're more stable they trade on more of a premiums uh, to their earnings so that's something you should keep in mind 
Now let's take a look at the difference between precious metals and mining stocks. So for precious metals, they're more stable. There's no business risk that you have to take. For example, you buy a piece of like a one ounce gold coin today, 10 years later, it's still there. You know, nothing really changed. For mining stock, however, you're more subject to business risk, geopolitical management, like, you know, the business can go bankrupt if it's run under bad management, geopolitical, some government can come in and say, hey, I'm taking over this um, company because, you know, you, you got a gold mine. Uh, there's more leverage uh, through mining stocks to the price of gold and recently it has been lagging with uh, gold outperforming the mining stocks. So let's talk about uh, some gold uh, picks. So for senior producers, I have the the big ones like Barrick, Newmont, Inigo, Inigo Eagle and Kirkland Lake. I've actually personally bought Barrick, Newmont and Kirkland. I just haven't got into an Eagle Eagle. For intermediate, I have uh, B2 Gold and Ken Ross. Once again, I um, I bought into both of them before. For silver, uh, for the senior producers, I have Pan American and SSR Mining. Obviously, you still have Newmon, who's also like a big producer, um, since silver is mostly as a byproduct, and Newmon has <laughs> You know the one of the biggest uh, gold producing and you know uh, and silver is just kind of the byproduct there for intermediate i have first majestic max silver silver crest fortuna first majestic they really focus on uh, mainly silver and uh, max silver i think was a like it has a high margin producer silver crest they're looking at maybe i think it's like high grade um, and in terms of if you if you double the grade, then you can double the amount you can get for it. So, you know, pretty interesting. Finally, for the last category, there's royalties. You have your biggest one, Franco Nevada, and then precious wheat and precious metals. Wheat and precious, I think they folk they have quite a bit of uh, silver ones. Uh, Sandstorm, a Cisco royalties, a bit smaller. Uh, Metella royalty is also a bit smaller.